Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today's Friday, which means it's time to fix a device. The device that we're going to be fixing today is this PS5 Slim. It's got an HDMI issue and I believe that somebody has already attempted the repair. Let's take a look at it and see what we find. All right, we've got a PS5 Slim with a bad HDMI port. You can see how the inside looks all dented in and broken. Almost like the plastic has been melted. I wonder if someone's tried to replace it and they failed. Let's take a look at it, see if we can fix it. First thing we're gonna do is pop off the shells, just like that. That came off really easily. So I think someone's been in here before. We'll disconnect the fan carefully and take out the screws for it. Then we can lift out the fan, set it aside. Now I'm just gonna go around the border and take out all of the screws that are holding down the housing here. Carefully lift up the disk drive. And we'll set it aside. And now we can continue to remove the remaining screws. And it definitely looks like someone's been in here because this sticker is missing. And there's all this weird blue tape someone tried to Put the coax cables kind of back using it. That's fine, I guess. Hopefully they put the screws back in the right place. We'll pop those off, get them out of the way. Now I'm gonna commence with a long process of removing all of these silver screws. All right, now that those are all out, I'm gonna carefully lift on the shield here. And definitely, yep, yeah, someone's been in here because that came off really easy. And it looks like we've got quite a bit of blob of solder here and a lot of yeah someone's definitely tried to do this and they failed so yeah let's get this board out hopefully hopefully they didn't pull any of the pads for the hdmi but if they did i can we can go through how to fix them take off all of this we got a screw here on the board and over here as well and push down on the bracket here so we can slide out the big flex cable and now let's pop out the board and lift it out and we'll have to go into the microscope, but it looks like we're missing a capacitor. Hopefully we don't have to replace too many components other than just the HDMI. So let's go take a look at that under the microscope. All right, so looking at this under magnification, you can see we are missing the little capacitor that goes there on pin two and three. And then something else I just noticed is one of these guys got knocked off. So we'll have to repair that. This HDMI looks like it's actually new, but they burnt it and tried to solder it. So someone had definitely tried to replace this. And on the back side, everything seems to be there and intact. It just is a big mess here. So let's uh, let's clean it up. I'm going to start by removing the bulk of the, uh, the solder here. There's plenty of solder on this and it definitely doesn't need to be there. Probably should go with a bigger tip, but add some flux. We're going to go to a slightly bigger wick here. All right, that side's do a much more manageable amount. So let's go over to this side and we'll do the same thing. And that's much more manageable on this side. All right, we're going to come in from below and we're going to heat this up. I always go with kind of max temperature and mid to high airflow. So that I'm at 500 Celsius. I don't know what kind of solder was used, so it might come off quickly. It might take some time. You can already see the solder starting to melt on the legs. So I'm just gonna be gentle with it. And it's already starting to move. So carefully lift up, pull it away. And looks like all of the pads are intact. That is awesome. All right, so we've got our 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor that's designed for one little spot next to the HDMI. All right, so I'm gonna take one and very carefully drop it there. All right, so I'm gonna slowly move over this little cap into place. Normally I'd be doing this under the microscope, but you don't have to always do everything under the microscope. We'll come in from below with the heat and flow it into place. There you can see one of the sides kind of sucked down. Let's see if I can nudge the other one. There we go. And it's on. We'll take our new HDMI because I don't have to worry about any of the other components. We just have to deal with that. And I can deal with that after the HDMI is on. So one thing you could do if you really wanted to is pre-tin the uh, pads. All of these pins, you can pre-tin these pins. So I'm going to go quickly do that real quick and then we'll install it. 
All right, got those all nice and tinned up. So let's go ahead with the install. It's quite simple to do it this way. You can wick out the holes if you really wanted to change out the solder, or you can just go about it this way, which is to heat everything up till you see uh, the solder flow on all of the holes and all of the pins and everything, or all of the pads. And then we go and uh, stick the HDMI on and hopefully it aligns properly. If not, it only takes a reheating to do that. So everything looks nice and hot. Let that cool down for a second, and we're gonna go check the alignment. But we should be good. It feels, it feels straight. All right, so let's take a look here under the scope. It looks like it's slightly at an angle. So you can see the pads get a little bit bigger as we go from right to left, but they're all making solid contact. That caps back in place exactly where I want it. This would work just fine. I'm gonna go and nudge it back just a little bit because I want to just to line it up a little bit better, even though this is making solid contact. I can see plenty of solder on each one, so this would work as is. But it's slightly off angle just a little bit, so let's go take care of that. All right, we're just gonna nudge it a little bit back on the uh, this right side here. When everything's hot and ready to go, I'm just gonna nudge it a little bit. There we go, and that's all it takes. And would you look at how much better that is now. Uniform all the way across, nice and straight. Plenty of solder on each one, making good contact there. Now to tackle this little guy. So it looks like we're just gonna add some flux and we'll get out our iron. And I'm just gonna add some solder to the tip here. And we're just gonna add a little bit of solder to each one of those legs there to make it easy to solder. And I'm just gonna pull off a very similar component on this old uh, iPad. Although they're not the same color, they serve the same purpose and they're about the same size. So I'm just gonna pull this off real quick. Add some flux down here. And I obviously don't care about melting this by the connectors and everything. All right, that's on there. All right, I'm just gonna take a multimeter here and we're going to test the values. So I get 0.78 on this side and I get 0.78 as well over here. Let's see, I get 0 0.78, 0 0.78, 0 0.78, 0.78. Let's go across them real quick. I get the same readout across, across this as I do on these guys. So it should work. Let's go ahead and Put it back together and test it. All right, so we've got the HDMI replaced, the cap cut put back, and that one as well. You can see it's a different color. I'm gonna clean off the flux here real quick and then we'll put it back together. There's some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip and then we'll clean the back as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a little bit of a, I'm gonna clean up this area just a little bit. All right. Now that we've got the thermal paste all squared away, we'll go ahead and put back our logic board here. We'll slide in the flex cable and look for that distinct click, just like that. We'll put back the two screws on the board, that one, and this one. It's uh, quite easy to, to see them because there's actually, there's actually an arrow pointing at them. I like to hand tighten these just to get them going. They're really awkward otherwise. All right, we'll grab our shield here, the heat sink, and we'll throw it back on along with this cover. We'll get that one long screw and put it back in the corner here where it goes, and then put all the rest of them back as well. Now, if you really wanted to, you could kind of put it back together in a, in a way to test it right now, but I am uh, i don't mind taking it apart if I have to again. So I'm just gonna finish it up like I'm like I know it's gonna work and we'll, we'll see if it works or not. All right, now that we've got all those, I'm gonna go ahead and
put this on back. It's quite easy to not mess these up because it says W and B, standing for white and black or blue. So go ahead and connect up these coax cables. Use that <laughs> tape, <laughs> retape this down with the blue painter's tape, <laughs> I guess. I mean, it's about the same as the, uh, the basically scotch tape that they use normally, so. All right, uh, let's stick this back on and we'll put back in all the screws. All right, we'll grab our disk drive and gently push that back down, put our fan back on and plug it in, put our sticker back on, put our screws back. All right, we'll click this back on and this panel as well. And now we just need to go and test it. All right, let's go ahead and turn it on. And there we've got the logo and there we go. Everything's working, sound, display, everything looks really good. All right, so there, as you've seen, we've been able to get the PS5 Slim up and running again with Image. As you can see, somebody really struggled to try to replace the HDMI and they failed. Luckily, it wasn't much more than a new HDMI and a couple small components. It could have been much worse. They could have pulled every single pad and I would have had to run a bunch of jumpers and that would not have been as much fun. If you found this video useful, go ahead and smash the like button. Make sure you're subscribed as well for more future videos like this. And if there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.